pretended as though she didn't know about the UFO phenomenon. Well, something I would reveal to our audience, they may not be aware of this, I have reason to believe that during the Phoenix Lights event, President William Jefferson Clinton, who was vacationing down in Florida, playing golf with the golfer, uh, professional golfer Greg Norman from us. Australia, I believe. The, that was the night that President Clinton injured, allegedly injured the ligaments in one of his knees that required him to be spirited back to Washington, D.C. to undergo surgery, reconstructive surgery on his knee at Bethesda Naval Hospital. Well, the reason I find that fact so interesting is that if you look at the timeline of the events that took place during the Phoenix Lights event and the intercept by those two F-15s that I alluded to earlier in the program, uh, President Clinton injured his knee just at very a few short minutes after the intercept and shortly after a defense condition three was declared. U.S. military and the entire government, we are told, and it's been published in a book, uh, are told the U.S. military was raised from a defense condition five, normal peacetime condition, skipping four altogether, going directly to DEFCON 3. That was the instant that the president in allegedly injured his knee. And I think it is not altogether illogical, based on this information, to ask, rhetorically at least, whether the President of the United States might have been injured as an indirect result of probably the most dramatic UFO event in the history of all ufology. The Phoenix Lights event was an immensely dramatic UFO-related event and sighting. Well, I think so, they wanted to show us that they're there. Yeah, they did, and it's interesting that the government came out with a plausible explanation so soon afterwards, namely the launching of flares over a gunnery range down in Gila Bend, Arizona. But nothing could be further from the truth. The object that hovered over Camelback Mountain, for those listeners who have a propensity to do uh, trigonometric calculations, I'm going to throw out some information that they can use to satisfy themselves on about a statement I'm going to make here. One of the objects that hovered over Camelback Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona, was more than eight miles wide from wingtip to wingtip. And if people would like to do the same calculation, we know from the Air Force pilot that at the time of his intercept, the object was at 9,000 feet above ground level. At that same instant, people on the ground were looking up at it, and it subtended an arc of 135 degrees. That is more than a third of a circle. If you, That's enough information to be able to calculate the width of the object, and it turns out to be, if those figures are accurate, 8.23 miles from wingtip to wingtip. Now that is huge, <laughs> really huge. It was huge. And there were five or possibly even six objects, each of which we believe was on the order of the same dimension. So I've lectured on this over until I'm blue in the face, ripping my hair out, <laughs> trying to wake people up. And if it were not for a few radio talk show hosts who are willing to invite me on to their program, uh, I'm not sure where we would be. People would not know much of this because the American people have lost the the propensity to read. They want things on a television screen. And unfortunately, the television screen is not a very good medium for getting accurate, meaningful information. Oh, what no television way. programs want is ratings. What you need to do is get information, and that's best done by reading, in my opinion. 
Well, you know, Peter, a lot of countries, you know, in South America and even other places, you know, they actually, you know, tell their population that uh, there are UFOs and, you know, report the sightings of UFOs. And this up, I think recently, even the UK themselves even had a department that uh, was keeping track of it. And then you have the former uh, premier of um, uh, Canada uh, that strongly, you know, says there is UFOs and, you know, that American uh, government should divulge it to the American uh, people. Yeah. Their former minister of defense. Yeah. 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 That's who I was thinking of. Yes. Um, Has taken an heroic staff, uh, position, stand, in trying to wake people up, as in fact... Hey. Oh, we lost him. Okay, people, we're going to try getting them right back, so let's see here. And uh, let's see how to get them back. You want to get them back on here, uh, Kevin? So anyway, yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe we were talking about things we shouldn't be talking about and uh, see what uh, ah, transpired. We're trying to get him back on, so let's see what happens here. That was kind of strange. So, okay, here we go again. Hopefully he'll be there. Thank you very much for calling the National UFO Uh-oh. Recording Center hotline in Washington State at area code 206. Okay. Seven two two three thousand. Web. Okay. Well, we'll try again. Okay, we're going to give that a try. It's, it seems like, you know, it's funny when you start talking on certain subjects. All of a sudden, you know, you um, get cut off for for no reason at all. So we're trying to get Peter back on. Isn't that ironic? That yeah, we, the line go dead just as I'm making my most impassioned grandstand display <laughs> oh yeah i think uh my producer wants to say something real quick oh i know yeah. right that was very very eerie on you know our part like what the heck happened <laughs> yeah that was yeah, my mind just went dead yeah we got a loud squeal on our end and that, that was the end of it so oh. boy that's odd I had, yeah. to, I had to take my headphones off that's that's how loud it was yeah it, it was, was yep. loud squeak Yes. I just went to uh, busy or busy signal. Oh wow! So what we 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 were talking about there, uh, you know, we only got about ten minutes left. So uh, I do, you know, want to finish this part of the subject, and then I want you know to promote you. I mean, you know, people need to know about you and how they can help you. Well, that's terribly kind of you, but we were talking about the Phoenix Lights, a great, a tremendously dramatic event and if any of our listeners are interested in it or hearing about it for the first time i would encourage them to go to our website ufocenter.com and look at all the reports for the thir- the evening of the 13th of march 1997 we just had the 21st anniversary of that event and uh, start reading <clears throat> excuse me start reading reports in fact, we may have had an equally, almost equally dramatic event occur this past December, December 9th, uh, 2017, a flotilla. It appears to me quite likely that a flotilla, upwards of 100 craft, crossed the United States they were first seen in South Dakota and Georgia, perhaps North Dakota or North Carolina. Did I say South Dakota? South Carolina. They went from South Carolina and Georgia out to Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Utah, Idaho, Washington State, Texas, and the U.S. Air Force, about three or four days after this event had occurred, came out with a very, very slick, for most people, very convincing article about how it was a group of 120 paratroopers who were taken from South Carolina out to Nevada and dropped off at a, uh, at a military site out there. I can't prove that that was not the case. 
but they said they had a hundred aircraft involved in that aerial exercise and for 120 paratroopers i doubt it yeah that it doesn't seems highly unlike, unlikely yeah that doesn't sound too you know believable that uh you know, of course, hey, it could have been a weather balloon, you know, according to the government. Or crash dummies or swamp gas. You bet. No. That's absurd. Yeah, it's We're true. being lied to by a government, and I want to know why they're lying to us. Well, I think a lot of people want to know that. They want to know what's going on. You know, I, what scares me, I had, well, maybe about a month ago, a ex-official from the DOD, and he told me so many things about the government it, it, I could, you know, after I did the show, I couldn't even sleep for two nights. That's how upset I was and, and scared. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of things going on in our government that if the American people knew about them, if they were willing to get up over the, off, out of their overstuffed chair and do something, they would uh, be very annoyed and would actually, it would probably change the complexion of the voting population in our country. Yeah, we would have a lot of people uh, changed in government. Hey, a question. You were telling me that you had a, uh, a hoax going on or something is going on uh, where uh, they were uh, slamming and harassing you. Yeah, one thing people could do is go and look at the uh, video. On the 26th of August last year, 2017, a young woman put a video on YouTube entitled 10 Scary Telephone Numbers, 10 Scary Telephone Numbers. And she listed 10 numbers, the National UFO Reporting Center's hotline number, area code 206-722-3000, was the last of 10. And in a very immature, juvenile fashion, she encourages people to call our number with prank calls and prank reports. In point of fact, uh, I don't know her role in this, but probably 90% of the calls I've taken of the prank calls, and I've since last August I've taken, I estimate, in excess of 25,000 prank calls from young, generally from young Americans. Boy, that takes a lot of time from you. It takes has taken hundreds of hours of my time for no benefit whatsoever. And many people have submitted complaints to Google, which owns YouTube, urging them to take this video off off the uh, internet. But it hasn't happened yet. I've never heard such filth in all my life coming from young Americans. Believe it or not, from as young as I would guess from their voices as young as six or eight years of age. And it's been probably the worst experience of my 24 years running this hotline. I'm sorry that's happened to you. Oh, it's, it's an infuriating situation. And I've turned the, I contacted the FBI and uh, they declined any interest in it or any um uh, really authority, I guess, would be the proper term to do anything about it. So... But you know what's also scary? Still scary. working on the problem, but it's... Uh, I haven't figured out how to do it. What people could do, if they really wanted to, contact, as I mentioned earlier, contact Google. There's a means for submitting a protest or uh, a complaint about an offensive video on YouTube. I have an idea. Oh, oops, sorry. Yeah, I think Kevin has a question real quick. Yeah. I, I have an idea. If you go to the YouTube video, there's a there's a little spot, I think, at the top of the video. You can actually report the video for, um, you know, there's like a whole bunch of different reasons why you can report the video, but if it's something that's like harassment. Offensive. And her and offensive. You can report the video, and they have to take it down eventually, if there's enough I reports. Now, hey, appreciate the tip, and that's been done by thousands of people, but it has not motivated Google to take the material off the uh, internet. Now, the person I, I had on, you know, who's a former DOD DOD agent, told me 
uh, uh, off the side. He said that Google 